Hey guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today's guest is the under 105 Britain's Strongest Man and co-founder of World Ultimate Strongman, Mr. Mark Boyd. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing good, mate. How are you? Really good. So we've been we've been working quite a bit together recently on the commentary for the World Ultimate Strongman, but not a lot of people know much about you in terms of how good an athlete you are and um, how much other involvement you have with the World Ultimate Strongman. So I wanted to get you on today, have a chat about you, what got you into strength sports in, in the first place, and, and then how you got involved in, in promoting and kind of where you are today. So I, I want you to take us back to the start. What got you involved in lifting? Um, it all started when I joined the Royal Marine Commandos. So probably even before then, when I, I sort of played football, always loved playing sports, um, but I was always that skinny guy, the, the, the wee guy um, sort of when I was younger and at school. And um, I progressed into the Royal Marines. I was super young. I was 16 years old and I had like a six-year career. But during that six-year career, I, I started to sort of get into weight training and um, focusing really on uh, progressing my athleticism in terms of endurance, speed, power. So like we used to do things like uh, yomping. So what yomping is, is essentially you have 120 pounds on your back and you carry it for, let's say, up to 42 kilometers, 30 miles. Okay. <laughs> um, so we'd, we'd be really be working on the, the endurance aspect alongside um, the strength. So me being a little guy, I want to sort of, progress that alongside the fitness so I got into weight training um always when we had downtime so it wasn't really when we were in a combat role or a training role so when we were on the base or when we were doing sort of security sentry work um I'd start smashing sort of like the basic compounds like deadlifts squats overhead press uh, and yeah kind of grown from there and with the marines training as well we always did strongman fundamental movements like flipping tires, pushing cars, carrying jerry cans. It was literally whatever we could get our hands on when we were sort of abroad anywhere, we, we'd do it. So it kind of sort of tied into the strongman early without even knowing. Cool. Um, yeah, so, so that many, was kind so of how it people started. use the, the strongman type implements for, for various different training, don't yeah. they? Kind of like a, a, a real rural kind of stage. I remember when I used to play rugby, we just did, like you say, there'd be like a, a tractor tire there and you have to either flip it or push it and, you know, there's yeah. tug of war, stuff like that. And, you know, obviously that's kind of where you started is just kind yeah. of doing the, 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 the real basic movements that, that Strongman's known for. Yeah, I think the point I was trying to get across is, is in the Marines, you need to be very diverse and Strongman provided that diversity. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like from, from fireman's carries to... Uh, jerry can carries we, like we did it all and i didn't really know that was strongman at the time did you know about uh, strongman at the time or, or was it just... I, I knew i knew of strongman but i didn't i didn't correlate with what what i was doing was actually okay. strongman training yeah um because we used to do things like close quarter combat and fighting and we would do, be doing like strongman movements as part of that training it, it was all like looking back on it it was just strongman yeah <laughs> obviously we could we could run further and <laughs> what but i was gonna say that is it yomping you said yomping yeah that yeah. sounds so, like a strong man's nightmare <laughs> it is. oh for sure for sure uh it was always the case of the the bigger lads would suffer because you're going from a to b over undulating terrain um sometimes it would take like up to eight hours to do it uh, i can't, I can't think of anything worse <laughs> oh uh, it's, it's, it's it's like a bodybuilder's powerlifter's strong man's nightmare uh minimal food like rations you're it's it's like 3 a.m yeah it's it's not uh optimal, Tough, it's not. toughened you up though yes it hardened me yeah definitely that's, well, that, that's uh, an important factor for doing strongman particularly competitive strongman a lot of people you know they see these guys lifting big weights in the gym and stuff, but it's the, yeah. the events that require a lot of mental toughness, which is yeah. is what separates the, the the men from the boys, if you like. Yeah, we always sort of uh, had a motto. It was it's got it's a state of mind, uh, and that was we were sort of channeled to 
think a certain way and push your aggression a certain way. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you're right. I would say any sportsman needs that state of mind. Uh, I um, agree. You, you look at the best sportsmen like uh, across the board in, in, in different you know, competitive arenas, they, they all have a, a unique thought process very very different yeah. to sort of the, the the average person when you look at the especially the real greats of different sports they they're just wired differently yeah yeah so. for sure and and we were we were definitely chiseled down let's say broken down and then built up to think like yeah so how, how long were you in the marines for six years cool six years yeah. really good <laughs> a good little yeah, yeah yeah enough let's say it was enough Okay, so when yeah. when did you start sort of really focusing on on the strength training then? The strength training actually, I actually started when I left the Marines. Yeah, um, I, I kind of started it early on. It was like with bodybuilding, and it was a kind of a phase of weight training was bodybuilding. Yeah, and just as as I left the Marines, I started sort of breaking into strongman uh, training. Um, and just kind of took it from there after I left the Marines. How old were you then? Uh, 22. Okay, that's cool. So, so yeah. how many strongman contests have you done? Because you've not competed loads, have you? You just, no, you, no, you're, no. You're, you're quite I've, selective about the shows that you do. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> like, my, let's say my first year and biggest year was 2018, uh, where I did Scotland's Strongest Man under 105, and then Britain's Strongest Man under 105, and then... I competed in 2019 in Scotland, yeah. um, but I, ha I had a bicep injury. I don't know if you can see. I think it's this one. Yeah, the, the typical bicep tear. You're, you're a proper strong man then if you have a yeah, bicep tear. Yeah, so <laughs> that, 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 that 2019 uh, was the last one I did, Scotland's Strongest Man Under 105. So I've, I've only actually competed in three, let's say, international or national yeah. strongman events. Um. We spoke about it before that 2018 was when World's Ultimate Strongman was rumbling, let's say. And I feel that at that point, I needed to sort of prove to anyone sort of around World's Ultimate Strongman to gain a bit of respect that I had to go and actually compete. Albeit I had been to competitions, I'd seen how they were run. From when I was in the Marines, I actually I started organising strongman competitions here to... Um, like the local events in Dubai and then obviously to World's Ultimate Strongman. So that 2018 was the staple of, I'll do it, get a bit of respect, and then I'll plow forward with uh, World's Ultimate Strongman. Well, you, you've really earned your respect. I mean, you're, you're, you're under 105 competitors. Tell us some of, I mean, have, have you lifted 380, 380, 400 kilos? Yeah, so uh, at Britain's under 105, at the time, um, the max deadlift was 380. Yeah. Uh, I managed to pull 383 on the day. Nice. Um, uh, totally unplanned. It wasn't, it was on a stiff bar. It was on grass. It was on ply boards. So that's Pro proper for, strong man. Yeah, yeah proper <laughs> strong man. So for me, it was, it was such an eye opener. Albeit I, I knew, let's say, the state of strong man, but it was such a big eye opener. And and the guys did a great job at setting it up and whatnot. But for me, it was like, this kind of was really penny dropped. And I was like, I've I've pushed myself, like, to come. I flew in from Dubai. At, like, I did, like, obviously, ev everything at that level, you're doing yourself, right? You're organizing transport. You're staying in the Premier Inn, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then you go down there and you're turning up. There's a crowd of maybe 100 people. You're in, you're in a back, like like a car park or a, a field, and and that for me was really penny dropped, and and it was what sort of let's say, um, em embedded the mottos of World's Ultimate Strongman or the ethos that we we want to push. Well, let's let's talk about that because um, I mean, just firstly before I go that, how long did you move away from Scotland? Sorry. So, so you you're obviously Scottish. When when did you yeah. move away from Scotland? Because so, obviously you live in Dubai now. How long? I have joined you... joined the Commandos when I was sixteen, and then as soon as I it was like three days after I led, left the Commandos, I flew out to Dubai. Really? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've I've been away and for ten years. That's okay. Ten years. Yeah. Right, so you're you're in Dubai. You've come back to to Scotland. You competed there. Yeah. You're thinking, 
strongman needs to grow. It needs to be better. Yeah. So you, you're the co-founder of the World Ultimate Strongman. Tell us how that yeah. started. Um, so it all started, in terms of running strongman events, it all started when I was in the Marines. Um, we, obviously, strongman's a primal sport. You've got guys in the Marines who are all, let's say, full of ego and, and whatnot. <laughs> so at the time, I was a, a PTI, which is a physical training instructor in the Marines. And I would be in charge of, let's say, the troops fitness. and in charge of like the, the troops' morale as well in, in terms of keeping everyone upbeat. And it was when we were doing a sort of security, security tasking. And as part of downtime, I organised a strongman competition. Um, or what I thought was strongman. Okay. So <laughs> it was deadlift, <laughs> bench press, squat. So it was like a, like a powerlifting comp by the time. I called it strongman. So it, and, it was uh, a powerlifting yeah. comp. It was a powerlifting <laughs> comp, yeah. yeah. But at the time, <laughs> I, I genuinely thought it was strongman. So I've, you, I've you got did, a, I've got you, didn't a even, you didn't even go for the overhead. You just went no, 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 no. <laughs> and I, I had this, uh, I've still got the PowerPoint as well. It's four, four trip strongest man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had, I had pictures on this PowerPoint. I had pictures of like... Um, Eddie Hall, like all, all the, the top strong men, not knowing it was actually powerlifting. But anyway, um, I came to Dubai and that was when I'd started Strongman. And I'd, I'd really just seen a niche um, out, out in Dubai. There was no Strongman equipment. Um, within about the first three months, I was the only one to have like an Atlas stone, like the only Atlas stone in the UAE. It was a bit bizarre because there was nothing, but I managed to sort of, train with the like obviously the overhead the deadlift and the atlas so and that was only what i really trained and then <clears throat> from there i um opened up uh, emirate strength which is essentially a local let's say strongman community um obviously there's like i offer strongman training with it events seminars um and and from there i try to grow it locally so my thinking was sort of starting from the bottom up in terms of like educating people and yeah. and the, the aim of Emirate Strength was initially, I didn't want to call it Emirate Strongman, Emirate Strength, because I had such a, a an experience with strongman training, being so diverse and adaptable to different sports or different uh, disciplines, the aim of Emirate Strength was to use Strongman as a training base for CrossFit, for yeah. MMA, yeah. for boxing, for, you know what I mean? And, and have it Strongman on its own on its side. So it was to use the, the, the fundamentals, because you'll see, you see Emirate Strength Boxing, you'll see the, you know what I mean? Yeah, the yeah. other things that we do. So that was how it all started. And it, it, just, it just took on like really, really quickly in terms of locally, like, so many guys got involved with it. Um, we ran our first um, event in 2017. Okay. Uh, yeah, 2017, where we held... Oh, no, in fact, 2016, where we held uh, Dubai Strongest Man. We got the, the strongest guys in Dubai together. We, we managed to go down the pier. We were pulling yachts. Obviously, we, we have a lot of access to, let's say, the the nice things yeah you guys like, you guys make everything look bigger don't you <laughs> so yeah yeah so the, the first event was a bit lavish let's say <laughs> um so we did uh 2016 we did dubai strongest man then the following year um i started to do small events like a truck pulling event just on its own atlas yeah. stone event just on its own just to sort of keep the 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 wheel churning let's say um, and at the end of 2017, I met Don Idris, who is now my uh, part, business partner with World's Ultimate Strongman. And that was where he really seen something um, in Strongman as a whole. And we, we sat down and we just kind of put our heads together because we're both very creative and we're good at bouncing off each other. Yeah. Um, and we just sat down, we put our heads together and said, right, 
how how can we make this bigger? And like we obviously put our, put our uh, crazy ideas together, and we planned to do a show in December 2017 at an expo, which is a Dubai Muscle Show. And our aim was to bring in athletes from different regions into the UAE um, to compete. And actually, we even brought in Danny Moore from Scotland. Um, what I wanted to do was bring in some like UK talent to show the like, the differences in, let's say, competition. Okay. Because the, the guys within this region hadn't really seen what competition was. Yeah. Um, so I brought Danny Moore in, and we got guys in from the region around to to compete in Emirates Strongest Man. And at the time, Eddie Hall was there. Uh, Eddie Hall was visiting. We asked him to come and watch and and, and referee. And um, yeah, we put on like me and Don. We said, right, let's put let's put a decent amount of money into it. Let's make it look like nice. We had a car deadlift. We had a quad bike deadlift. We had like a UAE stone carry. Really like made it look like it was probably one of the best local events that that we'd put on. And yeah. it was. Like the crowds that it got, and it was like this is this this can pick up, like this yeah. can be something. Um, and yeah, then from there, we the following, let's say, following year two thousand eighteen, um, we managed to sort of put all of our ideas together, um, and come out up with world's ultimate strongman. Yeah, so it was, on, it was, yeah, and the rest is history. I mean, and, and it didn't take, I think it was maybe like six events in terms of small events that that we did, yeah, um, in order to, to get to where we are. We are well, obviously being very lucky. It was, I mean, it's, it's very rare that a, a new promoter can come in and get the amount of quality athletes that you guys got. Yeah, I mean, you had literally every single top strongman at the time, yeah signed up to do the, the original world ultimate yeah. strongman um and it was uh, you know from my point of view obviously i came over and we're always as athletes we're always a little bit skeptical first time working with yeah. a new promoter because in this sport particularly you've got to build that trust over time to you know and that that's unfortunately there's been a lot of things that have happened in strongman that have let athletes down if you like yeah so a lot of people tend to be a little bit dubious when when things start but it was kind of clear once once we came over that you guys were really making an effort to to look after the athletes. But yeah. one thing, even then, we, we've we've seen contests before where a big event happens, someone throws a lot of money at it, but there's no sort of plan to keep it going or no kind of sustainable future plan. You guys have have always had a a goal of keeping this to, to a long term yeah. thing, haven't you? It's yeah, not just yeah. about putting on one show and then you know <laughs> going under there's, the ring. Yeah, yeah. As you say, like there's a lot of promoters that do that, but genuinely, like we want we want to make the sport bigger. This isn't something that it's for a quick buck or what everyone seems to think. It is literally we want to progress the sport. And from my standpoint, I want to build it from the ground up. So the grassroots is is where it's going to grow. Obviously, we've brought in, we've we've built the the sort of fundamentals of world's ultimate strongman but at the same time we're still going to be chipping away at the grassroots and bringing them up as, that's as important well. having that kind of feeding system is is massively important and i, I know you guys have like a, a you've set out a qualifying route for new athletes now obviously your first comp you've just gone invited the best guys and yeah. you know i think people understand why you do that you you want to make people watch you want to put bums on seats you want to yeah. you, you want your brand to be seen yeah but uh, and from from an athlete's point of view, you guys really looked after us. And I'm not saying this just because you you know I've, I, I'm yeah. pretty open with with most of the promoters. And you know, there's promoters I really get on with, and there's others I, I haven't got on with so much in the past. But I, I think the Giants Live guys do an awesome job of the arena shows. You know, you, you guys focus slightly different in terms of you, you put on an arena show, but it's it's more about the whole spectacle and the the, the visual. Uh, yeah. There's a guy called Glenn Ross who runs shows in the UK, and I, I even like his shows because he, he focuses on like a family entertainment uh, that that side of things. But you guys definitely looked after after the athletes better yeah. than I've ever experienced before. And I mean, 
<laughs> strongman's funny because we're definitely not treated like footballers or anything like that. You yeah. probably realize that, you know, if you, you're from strongman yourself, but um, often, you know, I, I've done contests w- way back where you're sharing a room with, you know, another strongman that snores extreme. I mean, I've, I've, I've yeah. been sharing a room with a guy and at three o'clock in the morning, I had to go and pay for my own room because I was just, I was <laughs> going mad. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> yeah. you know, whereas you guys put us all in our nice own yeah. rooms. You know, we had cars to pick us up. You looked after our families and it, it just made the athletes feel respected. And yeah. I think that if you can continue to do it, you're always going to have the loyalty of the athletes because yeah. it's not even so much about the huge prize money. Athletes want to be treated like they feel like they're, 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 they're an actual person. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes in the past, they've just been treated like a commodity. Yeah. You know, and that's what, that's what I respect about you guys. We've had arguments before in terms of what events you should do. I, I remember last year's <laughs> event, I'm like, Mark, you can't put this event in. It's just stupid. But yeah. We we have a conversation about it and we talk. Yeah. You're, you're, you're open to, to new ideas. And I mean, even with the feats of strength that we've been commentating on, and we'll quickly talk about that, there's things that both of us know can improve. But yeah. you guys want to improve it. You want to make things better. It's not just yeah. about doing this and then forgetting about it. There yeah, is a yeah. long-term goal. So so, so what, what's the vision with um, the World Ultimate Strong? Where no, are we just going co- co- Coming back to your point there, we're nev- we are never satisfied. We're genuinely, even like after... World's Ultimate Strongman, the first, first one we did um, in 2018, like, we were scunnered, putting it, putting it lightly, we were, we were at, like, this, uh, this was on fire, this was on fire. Same with 2019, uh, even the feats of strength, every Saturday afterwards, we're, like, on the phone for about this an hour. This needs to be better. This yeah. needs to be better, like, we need to be. Uh, so we do genuinely care, and, and m- maybe to... Uh, to the ends of our health, but we, we do genuinely care and we do really want to make it better. Um, our vision with the sport, um, we, we just really want to grow it. Um, we really want it to be the, the mainstream sport that it deserves to be. Yeah. I think that's the, the best way to put it because having experienced it myself, I know I know what athletes go through in terms of like the poundage on the body, the sacrifices that are made, um, and that needs to be recognised or at least um, appreciated. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, I, I've suffered 17 years of, of doing this sport and yeah. there's very little reward in terms of like financial side of things. I mean, I've, I've, I wouldn't change a thing because I'm proud of what I've achieved and I've loved, to, uh, there's been some terrible downs, but there's been some amazing ups as well. And yeah. it's allowed me to travel all over the world. And, you know, I, I genuinely have always loved challenging myself and, and doing what I do. But it's nice to see the sport taking that step up. You know, the last, I guess, four or five years, Strongman has really yeah. started to, to improve. And hopefully we can continue to push that now and, and like you say, get it where it deserves to be. Cause yeah. I'd love to see these guys being able to call themselves professionals. You know, the, the top, say, 50 guys in the world would, if they could call themselves professional, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Whereas yeah. right now, it's just a small handful that can really, really do that. Yeah. And I think a lot of that as well is building knowledge. We spoke about grassroots. And I think implementing some knowledge at that level will help everyone grow. You, you know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of people do still get mixed up. Oh, he's a bodybuilder. He's a powerlifter. He's a weightlifter. Uh, these guys are strong men. Like... And I think educating people on the type of training that's done and whatnot from the base level yeah. is, is important, is important in that growth. Yeah, I know that's um, something both of us are kind of keen to do. We're sort of both yeah. working hard, working together on a few projects, hopefully. And um, yeah, uh, it's something that needs to improve. People's knowledge on Strongman is still very limited. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, when, when I see the comment sections of different videos and stuff like that. It's quite clear that there's not enough yeah. information out there. And, and hopefully we can now with more events being on, you know, even if it is just streamed online and, and fans can come and watch it, they can get educated more on the process. They can yeah. understand more about the athletes. The The great thing I like about the world ultimate strongman is obviously it's great having the likes of Thor do the 501, but it's great seeing some of these lesser known athletes and yeah. the, the, the profiles that you guys put on them, the little backstories. I think as a fan, that's what we want to see. You know, it's, it's always awesome seeing the best guy in the world, but you yeah. want to see his opposition. You want to see the battles that, that 
you know, how good the guys are that he's up against. Because I think we've just been a little bit... Spoiled. Yes, spoiled with some incredible feats of strength that yeah. make other people look quite average. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. now, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I, I was at fault myself when we were watching Rauno against um, Jerry a few weeks back on the 400 kilo deadlift for reps. Yeah. You almost just expect a record now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's like, yeah. Rauno did five reps with 400 kilos. Do you know how impressive <laughs> that is? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, I, and I, I, was, I remember thinking afterwards, like, why am I disappointed with his performance? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the guy did yeah. incredible. But when you see the likes of Thor and Eddie and, you know, some of these other guys doing ridiculous numbers, it does sort of warp your perception of what's actually really yeah. good. Yeah. But to, talking of the, um, the, the, the feats of strength, which has been your favorite so far? My favourite. Or is that putting you, you know, on the spot? Do you know what, do you know what, no, 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 no. Do you know what my favourite's been? And it, it, it's Luke's log press. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, like, I really, like, it wasn't the fact it failed that I just wanted them to get it so much. Yeah. Well, you're a, uh, you're a fellow yeah. Scot as well. But fellow Scot, I, no I, bias there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not Scottish, but I, 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 I really love the, the Stoltmans, both of them, and um, Luke particularly, I think because he's the older of the brothers, you know, people always talk about Tom and, and rightly so Tom's, you know, I hope going to go on to win you know, many major titles, but Luke yeah. is a fantastic athlete in his own right. Yeah. And yeah. What I love about Luke is his, his whole attitude. His class. And, yeah. He's just uh, a I always tell him about his class. Yeah. Yeah. And you could, he, he lets you in. He's not like some of the European guys are a bit more stern. You could, you know, he, Luke is emotional and you can see it in his face when he's not yeah. happy. But that draws you in, and it was yeah. you know, as, as terrible as it was to see him fail. You sort of believe you, you get involved, and you you want to sort of you know pick him up, and you want to yeah. see him come back, and that's emotionally invested. <laughs> exactly, but that that as a fan yeah. is more important than seeing someone just lift a big weight. For, yeah, for me. no, it's wanna, true. It's true. I want to get behind these guys, and you want to see them succeed, but you want to be part of the, the, the journey as well. So to see that yeah. fail, and, and he was so close, he really was. But I, I have to say it was my favourite of the of the event so far, even yeah. though it wasn't a world record. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what's nice about the feats of strength as well, is like we've painted a picture of the athletes and, and we've allowed the athletes to paint whatever picture they want. And even seeing like a Novikov, like when he first started Strongman, like the difference, like... He started so young as well, so the yeah, change is always, yeah. you know, people, I, I don't know if you remember, like on Instagram, they do like these 10-year pictures sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. And uh, I've got like training partners and people I train, and the, the, the change is, is immense. I look at me, I'm like, oh, I've grown a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a beard there now, yeah. yeah. I'm greyer. <laughs> but, Wiser, um, but greyer. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Anyway, with the um, World Ultimate Strongman Feats of Strength, are we going to see a second series? Hmm... Is this possibly that could this could is possibly, brewing is brewing, brewing? Yes. so excellent i mean it's to tell us about the the, the future i mean future plans that you can, can tell us i mean obviously with with covid this year it's, yeah it's really messed up a lot of things can we expect to see a live show this year this year there is a possibility of a live show at the end of the year we aren't going to make any commitments with anything i think i think it's hard to about right it now it's it? too hard um yeah. it's not something that we're going to commit to and, and get everyone hyped up about. Um, but we do aim to have shows next year. Okay. Um, our aim at World's Ultimate Strongman is to essentially have a competition every quarter. Okay. So it almost turns into a series. Yeah. Um, and having them in different regions. Whether that's globally, whether that's within the Middle East, I'll leave that to perception. So we, we, but, uh, you're hinting yeah. that we could have some big things coming. Yeah, yeah. And that's our plan is, is to, to essentially build a, a quarterly series. Cool. And, and that will be global, not just, yeah. not just in Dubai. I, I, obviously, the Dubai show has become quite famous the last couple of years. Is that something you want to keep going? Obviously, I know this yeah. year is an issue, but once... I, I would, say, back I would say the UAE, UAE is going to be the... We, we we like to call it the, the home of strongman, um, and that's still the aim is, is for this to be the home of strongman and and sort of it was it was born here so in terms of world's ultimate strongman so we'll, we'll go grow from here. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. 
No, it's going to be it's going to be good. And uh, I, I think it's good to see some competition. I think it yeah. it helps the athletes. It helps the 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 fans that are, they're going to be able to witness more strength challenges. Um, we'll probably argue more and more about events in the future. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't say argue; it's more of a debate. Yes, it's it's you no. Know, we are like <laughs> it's, to be fair. I, 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 we 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 had a discussion about some events for for last year's contest, yeah. didn't we? And I, I'm not someone that complains about events ever, but I, I've obviously got a lot of experience in terms of, of competition. And I mean, you know, you're, you're an easy person to work with as well. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny when you because everyone wants something different. As an athlete, you're yeah. all, you know, I, I try not to think of my own bias. I just focus on putting the best content yeah. out there. And I think no, I think that from our standpoint as well, both Don and I have always said, look, we are we're, our doors are open, and that's from other promoters to athletes like this we're new to this yeah we have a goal and we want to we want to achieve that as best as we can and that's whether other guys want to i don't want to say assist but be involved in that then look the doors are open we're not going to claim to be experts in anything that we always believe that there's someone bigger there's someone stronger there's someone smarter there's someone richer it's we, just about putting on quality like yeah. quality events and yeah, yeah. no I, I think that's that's great because like you said, there's always going to be competition. There's always going to be athletes that do different events and stuff like that. And it's yeah, it's just making. I, I think it's important to concentrate on what you're doing and yeah. put on the best content that you can, and yeah. get more and more fans involved in the sport. Yeah. And and as well with the quarterly events, we want that to be sustainable for the athletes in terms of financially, rather than beating them up 12, 12 times a year. In order for them to stay afloat, we want to beat them up four times a year. <laughs> four times, yeah. So you, you understand where I'm coming from. We're trying to sort of bring that down. Um, obviously, one show a year is not enough. We would love it to be enough, but not yet. It's just. And I guess, I mean, the athletes have the option of whether they want to do every show yeah. or not. It's, it's, yeah. it's impossible, particularly in this day and age, to compete all the time. Yeah. Guys, guys like Zadrunas and Marius Pajanowski could do it back in you know the the nineties and two thousands, um, but events were much heavy. lighter. Now yeah. the competition's too high, the events are too heavy, it takes too long to recover, uh, and guys they're, they're smarter with training, so they peak at a certain time, and then they need that back off time. But yeah. it, it, it would be good to sort of uh, the, the the way I see deciding the best of all time. I, I sort of like to compare it to tennis, where you've got the grand slams. Yeah. So rather than just focus is just one contest, it's who's the best at everything. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like a, a big a four four event contest, and then have like an overall winner at the end of it. That would be a, a good way to really decide who is. It's all on the cards, Lars. It's all on the cards. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It's good to hear. But before I let you go, I want to know about your future plans as an athlete because you're still training hard. I know yeah. you're attempting is it a four times body weight deadlift? Four times body weight deadlift. Yeah. Yeah, when so 100 we... kilos, 400 kilos dead left. Uh, f- we're confirming the dates, but it's in two weeks. It's uh, around 14th to the 18th of July. Awesome. Uh, you, you, you've been training with Larry Wheels for this, yeah? Yeah, I've been training with Larry Wheels. We actually brought, brought Larry Wheels over to Dubai uh, as part of our strongman incubation to sort of build him up um, for any strongman competitions that he was going to go and compete. Uh, and he ended up staying here, so he's he likes uh, it that much. Yeah, he loves it. He loves it. So yeah, I've been training with Larry. It's been good to uh, let's see, get get together with him and and pull some big weights. So I bet it's yeah, been great it's, having having someone as strong as him. Oh to yeah, with yeah 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 motivating. Are we going to see Larry in strongman? Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And, for uh, sure. Obviously, you've got, yeah. you've got first like um, you, hand. You know, you've, you've seen what he's been doing in the gym because obviously he's a great power lifter. Yeah, is he a good strongman? I'm putting you on the um, spot because he's your mate. So <laughs> statically, no, no, no. I, I, I tell him this as well. Statically, yes, statically, he needs to build athleticism. When he builds athleticism, the the, the sort of it's within his hands to do whatever he wants with it but he needs to build the athleticism that's one thing it's just and that, the that strength takes, is there yeah that's, that is something that people don't understand it takes time you, you, you it's 
it's very hard to just go from one sport to another yeah. and be world class at it. You could be good at lots of things, but yeah. to be a world elite level world class, particularly in strongman, just being good at one event doesn't mean you're going to be a great all round athlete. You look at yeah. the, the best guys that have won the most competitions; they're good at many, many disciplines. So yeah. it does take time. I mean, Zadrinus came from powerlifting, and at first he wasn't that good in, in strongman performance, and he just got better and better and better every year. And I think Larry has all the potential in the world. It's just if he sticks with it and you know avoids injuries, then yeah. it's going to be exciting to see how he can do. No, for sure, for sure. You'll definitely see him soon. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you very, very much for coming on, Mark. I'm looking forward to oh, – we'll be do, doing commentary again very, very soon. But yeah. um, I'm hoping to come over for some training once we can sort of travel yes, about. Yes, it'll, yeah. it'll be good to do. But, yeah, thanks for coming on, mate, and we'll um, no worries. see you soon. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this chat with Mark Boyd. We will be back with more interviews very soon. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Have an awesome day.